Hey everyone, I'm Jason. We spent a little over the past month crafting a Echo of Screams from Dark and Darker. This isn't just a hunk of plastic, it actually screams if I turn this on. And it took more time and failures than I'm willing to admit. But we got there in the end. And today I'm going to show you how. If you're new here, Dark and Darker is a loot extraction game in the style of Dungeons dragons. Here all the players are competing for the best loot in the game, which drops from the bosses, and some of you may know me as a boss tutorial guy. One of these weapons is the Echo Screams, drops from the Ghost King. When you hit players with it, it deafens them with... I've never actually gotten one despite killing the Ghost King more times than I could count, but I thought to myself, why not just craft one? And here we are. Now I know some of you are thinking, Jason, Dark and Darker's dying. Why even bother? I hear you. Team reviews are dropping. Rumor and drama content's on the rise. Half the player base has quit. The other half is making a Reddit post about how they're going to quit. Epic Games is removing the game from the store. People just need to take a break. I hope. You know, I've taken a break since early May. I've been working at this video. On one hand, I can count the number of times I've launched this game. But I'm feeling all right. And you know, I was building something cool though, you know? But I want to show you something cool. Frock it. I'm going to show you how I crafted an Echo of Screams. So I started by stealing the game I mean, borrowing for educational purposes, your honor. Obviously I wasn't gonna be able to print this in one go. So my first step was to split this into several parts. I decided on a dowel system and press fitting the pieces together like Lego pieces, hollowed out some space for a battery pack, made a heat set insert, a column for the wire channels, plate cover for the battery, and a screw hole. As I worked the chef, I made sure to create all the female and male connectors. You'd think the game model is highly detailed, but it's actually just faked with textures. So I made the details myself, like for the handle and the emblem. I really just traced stuff out, I didn't really know what I was doing, but it came out alright. And I hit all the electronics behind the emblem, like the speaker, the amplifier, and the Arduino. Can't forget about the power switch. I spent about a week printing everything on a single printer. What are you Printing. Step bro. You know, I actually live streamed myself building my Voron printer, so there's no question why. A few of the prints had fails I could recover from. The axe head unfortunately did not. Maybe a little too tight of a fit, but for the most part, everything printed fine. Except that's a huge fucking lie. Look how many prints I had that would just fail 30 minutes in. Nothing a little sanding couldn't fix. Yeah, well, that's a kind of a press fit. Just realized the power switch doesn't fit. So I took a Dremel to the assembly and melted some plastic for the screws. Up until this point, I've been doing all the electronics on a breadboard. But now it's time to wire the damn thing. I'm not an electrical engineer, so hopefully nothing breaks but I added in the power switch for the batteries, almost the same circuit as the breadboard I had, and a diode to prevent back feeding power. Nice. Future Jason here, and I just realized I didn't explain how the hit detection works. Now there's a little bit of math, but don't click off just yet. I left some Subway Surfer gameplay. So I have the accelerometer poking out, the Z direction going in and out this way. This is positive and that's negative. And pretty much what we're trying to track is like a hit direction. So it's either positive or negative. Hit something like this head on, it makes this shape. A big dip and then it oscillates a lot. But if you were to flip the direction of the accelerometer, so I think, it's gonna make it peak rather than a trough. So come on guys, lock in. All the code is doing is trying to detect when it drops like that. I'll leave the code. For you to see. That wasn't so bad, right? Anyways, I did some last little bit of sanding and then epoxied everything together. The astute among you will notice I didn't add the grip in Blender. Part of that is that I still need to level up my Blender skills, but I also wanted to see what it would look like if I soldered the grip pattern in. With the axe fully assembled, I would just sand, prime, and paint. Over and over and over and over and over! I did not know getting into this craft would require a lot of sanding and priming. At least I got to enjoy the morning sun before it got hot outside. Did our first layer of sanding. I'm putting on a thick layer here to go off the, uh, the connection. I'm not an artist. I did spray paint this failed print, but I wanted to use some um, acrylic paints and do some color mixing with the uh, red, yellow, blue primary colors. And hopefully it goes well, what the axe kind of looks like, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. I have like a brown right here. 
It's not even a brown, that's more like a mustard. But I'm not making consistent browns. On to the other side. We have some acrylic paint and we're gonna spray paint over it. Smear it. Great, because I don't know color match. So uh I may have gone a little too hard in the paint here, but you'll see. Lightly damp it with a, a wet sponge. Maybe just dry it up a little too quick. Honestly, I may as well have not bothered with the acrylics. We're gonna start trying to color match a little bit of this Damascus pattern on the blade. Keeping in mind this is my first time painting with acrylics, pretty happy with how this came out. It's by no means perfect, but it is somewhat accurate. I really think painting on the pattern and then scraping it off was the way to go. The last thing I did was add some blood. I found this pretty hard to do since the blood's a few different colors here. But I figured I could always add more blood later, so I didn't go too crazy with it. I just got the general feel of the artifact. Plus, wouldn't you just wipe the blood off your blade? I am not the best artist in the world, but I am going to say I'm done. <laughs> and with that... So Jason, I hear you ask. Where can I get my own Echo Screams? Well, I'm actually hosting a community tournament, and you can join it. The winner? Not you. They get the Echo Screams. But more on that in the next video, so subscribe so you don't miss it. I don't know what the future has in store for this game, or what that means for this channel, and what direction I'll take. But I hope you guys enjoyed this build as much as I enjoyed taking a break from Dark and Darker. But I'm open to suggestions. If you want more builds like this, deeper dives, or something totally different, drop a comment and let me know. I definitely want to keep doing creative videos like this. I mean, they take a lot of time, so I won't upload as frequently. But it's really fun learning new things, like Arduino and painting. I mean, there's a lot I want to try, so we'll just see where the game goes. But anyways, thanks for watching.